and thanks for clicking on. In a few short moments, we're going to take you out of the meat shop and down to Olds, Alberta, where we're going to go to the National Meat Training Center at Olds College. And we're going to go through their provincially inspected plant. So there they can kill animals on their kill floor, cut, wrap, value, add, process them, and sell them out of the same building. It's where I went to school in 2010 and I had very fond memories of the place. So I'm very happy we got to do this and I get to share it with you. Uh, Brad and all the faculty down there were very accommodating as well as some of the students as you'll see. So without any further ado, oh, one last thing. You'll want to stick around to the end of the video if you're interested in seeing the kill floor side. I have a little message for you on that. But without any further ado, let's head down to Olds College and see the National Meat Training Center. I might throw this clip in at the end so that you know that this, the peril I went through to record this video at Olds College for you. I'm coming down a notorious hill located outside of Innisfail, Alberta, where we have a jackknifed semi-trailer that's dang near across the QE2, the busiest highway in Alberta. Dang, he did it good and uh, yeah these roads are atrocious Olds College should be about just under two hours away I'm at the two hour mark and I bet you it takes me an hour and a half to get there yet so the lovely roads of Alberta in March deserve a like and a subscribe thanks take care Have a nice day. I hope the roads are good where you're at and you travel safely. All right, so you can see everyone's just getting fired up for the day here. Lessons just ended. And as they're all getting prepped, heading into the cutting room, I want to show you what the students produce at Olds College. Back in the day, we didn't produce this much. The program has gotten huge and extensive compared to what we have done in the past but you know these guys are making lots of stuff I sell in my shop cheese smokies jalapeno smokies all this stuff that comes out of the smokehouse pickled sausage in a backpack bag is phenomenal they also prepare all the fresh cuts from the beef in-house all sorts of roasts they do different things that you don't get in other stores beer shinken <laughs> again I didn't make that down here they're also doing fermented sausages Olds College salamis, dried pepperoni, you get the knowledge on that stuff when you come here, as well as cured whole muscle stuff, beef brassola, pastrami, and things that you know you don't stereotypically see in Canadian markets and probably markets across North America, things like dried billetong, a South African treat. But they get way more merchandising out of the carcass is what they teach you down here. So if you're getting whole animals in and you want to cut them up, I bet you've never heard of the digital muscle stew meat. Um, flat iron steaks. They get 25% more value out of their carcasses and they do this all here. They have emulsified products like Weisswurst on hand. Fully stocked and I bet you there's more to come today. Maui ribs, things like that. They have pork, hams, bone-in legs, all sorts of other frozen fresh products. Very cool antique display of paraphernalia that Brad McLeod has collected and Shelly has collected. So this is all the stuff we can expect to see getting made here in the next couple days. Cool value added things, brat horse to pinwheels, all sorts of stuff. So I'm excited to get you guys into the back here as they get ready and uh, we'll show you how it's made. Well, look at this. We even have shelf stable products. We didn't do that when I was here. Very cool. Okay, right here we got Eamon. He's one of the instructors along with Brad and Shelly and the rest of the crew here. And they are learning how to make an emulsified sausage right now. So there's the bowl cutter. You get lots of hands-on instruction here at Olds College, which is beautiful. And there we go. Keeping the meat cold. <laughs> the debate on who's running the machine, who's running. What, what are you guys making, Eamon? We're making Coney Island hot dogs. Okay, there we go. Making hot dogs here. Alright, ready? Set the next green button down, number one.
So Eamon, you know, is giving them the tips and tricks to make sure that that meat is in constant contact with the blades so that they're getting better emulsification. And you're doing this every day at Olds College, you know, you got some book work in the mornings and then you put that book work to practical knowledge. You can see right here a nice food safety step. They're taking care of the temperature of the meat, getting maximum protein extraction. As that bowl cutter is running in the background there, we have other students preparing a product called emulsified jerky or extruded jerky. So they make it out of ground beef. And now these gals over here are running the vacuum stuffer. And as you can see, they got a really cool hose attachment. They load those racks right up in preparation for the smokehouse. Do you think you have the skill to be interviewed and spread emulsified jerky at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so is this the first time you've made this here at Olds? The first time I've been here? The first time you've made this product here? I've done this a couple times this year. Cool, so how does it go? You guys learn about the products in class, then you get out here and get kind of the hands-on knowledge after? Yeah, yeah, so Okay, so she handed the hose off so she can do a more thorough interview. Uh, so there's multiple programs in here. What kind of side of the program are we working in today? Uh, right now we're on the merch value added side, the retail side. Uh, we're both on the kill floor side. So this is a little bit out of our comfort zone. But... What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, I distracted her. We had a pile up. So you guys get to pick what you kind of do. So in Tarot, typically you're on the kill floor processing the beef and then value added students break the carcasses down and produce things like this? Everyone breaks down carcasses. Um, Thursday, Friday, the merch value added kids, they do the specialty items like the apricot tenderloin and stuff like that. And then we'll be on the kill floor Thursday, Fridays. But the rest of the week we're cutting and learning that. And then one day a week we get to be in here. Okay, I caught you on your one day. Well, looks like you're making some awesome jerky. And also at Olds College, you get to work on some of the coolest machines that come out of the industry. This is what they call a vacuum stuffer. They have a set of vacuum stuffers, refrigerated grinders, grinder mixers, all sorts of things. They have a pumping machine over in the corner there and that bowl cutter the kids are still working on. You also get to learn how to make this stuff right from scratch. So behind me uh, are the couple of students here mixing up spices. They have a, a, a fail-safe sheet so you know how to make the same product every single time. And you get all these ingredients and recipes and stuff when you come out of college. So I'm just gonna pop in and see how these girls are doing this. Do you guys mind me videoing you making a spice batch? Yeah, we'll see how bad we screw up. Okay. <laughs> So what are you guys whipping up here? Uh, this is the cover brine for the pump bacon. Okay. So I don't know if you want to show it. Okay. What are we looking at here? So we have to calculate our meat, which or it's over. Oh, you get a sheet. We have 40 kgs of water. Shelly already did that for us. So now we just have to take our 40 kgs of water and times them by each ingredient, which will give us our following numbers and then we'll mix that and that's our brine for our bacon cool so that's some of the stuff you learn at Olds College how to and then you can change the weight you can change the amounts and you're gonna get the exact same product every time correct it's all calculations yes. if you do all your calculations correct everything will be perfect and have you guys had the bacon from here yes it's very good yes nice. very good all right well I'm gonna watch you here all right And if you guys have seen some of my videos before, they do the exact same method as me. Grams per kilogram. Well, I do the same method as them, I should say, because I learned from these guys. So. so while she's measuring, a quick question. Were you in the meat industry before you got in here? I have goats. You have goats, so you, the live meat industry. Yeah. 
and you're just kind of looking to learn how to process them and value add them to them, that's why you came here? Essentially, yes. Try to cut out the middle guy. Nice. Okay. Alberta has the on-farm slaughter permit now. Are you taking advantage of that? Uh, I haven't because I don't like the way that they kill their animals. So that's why I'm doing this, so I can do it. Oh, okay, cool. No, I don't find it humane, so. Fair I enough. I want it done by them. I want it done by me. Sweet. Yeah. And you're getting those skills here? Like, so I'm guessing you're in the slaughter program side of it then? Yes. Yeah. Actually, Emily and I are both on the kill floor. Yes, we're both okay. on the kill floor. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm going to come back tomorrow and hang out with you guys on the kill floor. So, Do you mind if I ask you a couple questions while you do this? <laughs> Nothing deep and personal, trust me. So is this your first time making an emulsion? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, and so how does it kind of go? You get the classroom work, then you come out here, do the hands-on stuff with Eamon, kind of one-on-one-ish is your experience? Yeah, usually, yeah. That seems to be what we usually do is do a bit of classroom stuff and then beforehand and then we'll come and do an emulsion or we'll do a showcase of a, an emulsion. We watched uh, Liverwurst before doing this, do what Shelly did. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so what were the steps briefly, if you remember? I'll test you on camera. Oh, oh no. Um, well, we got to... Build up method, right? build, Yeah, build up method. So you put it in uh, your meat block in with the uh, ice, like 90% of your ice on the recipe sheet. And then you uh, bolt cutter it until it gets to about seven or seven degrees, right? And then we stop, add our spice, uh, fat, and then add the ice again, and then go again until set 15, or 12, 12 degrees. Okay, and there we go. Perfect, well, thanks for the briefing. I appreciate it. In there. Turn it on. Going in here? All right, there they go. Adding the fat content and the spices. This is another room at Olds College here. Probably my personal favorite room. It's where they do all the cooking. So they do neat stuff that I didn't get to do, like uh, they're doing some pressure cooking and kettle work here now. That's what this machine is. Uh, they have an oven or that they use also probably as a dehydrator and the smokehouse room. So for those of you that kind of got the hobby smokers, this is kind of what a commercial smoker looks like. Uh, you know, it's, that's probably about eight feet tall. Can't really tell from the video. And it's programmed with all sorts of these programs that the students learn to do. So it looks like we're on a, some sort of ham, a bless ham program. And on the left hand side, it's gonna go through each one of those steps hit certain parameters, maybe it's time, maybe it's humidity, maybe it's internal temperature of the product, and then it's gonna move on to the next step, which in this case looks like it's at its final cook step, and then it's gonna shower it down till the product's cold. And uh, <laughs> there's a little sight glass in here, but you can't see through it because it's covered by smoke, and I don't wanna mess with the program, but this is some of the more of the cool equipment you get to run at Olds College. And this big thing in front of me here you know, you've seen me load up smoke sticks and jerky tracks. This is called a smokehouse truck. So they wheel that thing straight into that great big smokehouse over there. Pretty cool. Doing some serious volume. So that's what the end of an emulsification looks like. It hit, what was it, 11 or 12? 12, 12 degrees. That's a hot dog to be. <laughs> Alright, so here we are in the cutting room with all the students breaking it down. So you guys breaking stuff down here right now for the retail store or custom cutting? Mostly just for the retail store right now. Um, depending on the day we'll have custom orders. Today is not a custom day. so. Okay, cool. All going to the store. So we got four chucks. You guys are all doing chucks right now? Blades, yeah. Part of the chuck. And so are you guys breaking them down the same way every time, getting a certain amount of steaks out for the store, or what do they got you doing? So you, got, you guys break it down the same way every time, getting certain steaks out for the store right now, or just a change day to day? No, we're usually pulling the same stuff out all the time. Okay. And we're pulling, getting our uh, flat irons and our Denver's out of this, so we're usually all getting put the store. Flat iron and the Denver, the two nice cuts come out of the blade. Delmonico is hanging out. The Delmonico? 
got the mock tender as well. Yeah. And you guys all take turns running the saw then? Yeah. Yeah. So you get a little hands-on experience at everything here. It's good. And how many weeks or months have you guys been here at this point? Three months? So they've been here three months. Do you feel you've gotten more proficient at your skill so far? That's a unanimous yes. That's cool. Do any of you guys have meat cutting experience from beforehand? No. Cool. So here we go, another one of the old college instructors. They get you some direct one-on-one -on -one time, uh, which is nice. They got pros in every section of the room. Back there in the other room, we had Eamon and Shelly giving the students tips you could bounce questions off of. Okay, they beckoned me over. They just got started on their hot dog production, those Coney Islands we just seen get blended up in the bowl cutter. Oh, man. You know how bad I fantasize about having one of these at my shop? Look how cool that is. So they got the hot dog casings on there. Cell so, cellulose hot dog casings, that is. And uh, Dane is kind of making sure they're coming out and getting them out of the way. The vacuum stuffer sucks them down. Into the chamber. And these guys are in charge of the production of keeping the flow going. Shelly, a question for you is, when I've made hot dogs in the past, they unravel on me. How many times do you guys twist them? Um, 10 twists right now on this but in the past uh, we never used the linker we actually used string to tie them off yeah. Yeah. so that's spinning 10 times every time we see it move jeez yes. so they don't unravel wow yes and again like nowhere else you get an incredible amount of one-on-one -on -one with the instructor Shelly's right there to guide you right through it it's so cool here I'm wishing I could go back to school right now there's the end product. We'll be making hot dogs here for the next little bit. And you know, are these getting loaded up into the smokehouse today? No, not today. No, not today. The smokehouse is being occupied with some pastrami uh, and then we're going to cook our jerky. Pastrami and jerky in the smokehouse today. Cool. And they got a lot going on in here. It's, but like I said, there's lots of instructors, lots of hands-on. It's a program like no other. I'm remembering it fondly. Okay, so this is Morgan. Morgan, you're kind of in charge of the retail cutting breaking end over here? Yeah, so mostly I'm doing the retail cutting now. The last year and a half I was teaching the sausage people. Cool. Uh, are you an ex-graduate? Yeah, I graduated back in 2014. Okay, cool. So how's the flow going in here today? What's the... I'm getting in a little late. They did a demo on alternative hanging this morning, but then after that, where'd you guys go from? They broke two more sides down, and then they're doing the two fronts from this morning because he just did the hind alternate hang. And they're going good. They're getting close to graduation. We have about another month, so they're getting their flow a lot better than in the beginning. Okay, so yeah, you're getting a little less questions this time of year then. Okay. okay, and then so what is each table working on a different primal and something like that? Yeah, usually we split it up and it's usually blades on the far table and then short loins, maybe cross ribs on the middle one and then legs on this one. And so we usually split them up. Right now they're kind of just picking a piece because they're getting used to the flow of things so it's a little less structured. But Okay, cool. And you guys do every well, as much as you can for the store comes from here. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything. So everything that we're selling, they're doing. Yeah. So nothing else comes in or ordered, and then we'll do the sides out when we get a little excess beef trim. But cool. And I was talking to the guys over on the blade table there. They said they're grabbing like mock tenders, flat irons, Delmonicos, and Denver's. So that's not stuff you stereotypically see like at your chain grocery store. Do they move good here? Yeah, really good. It's pretty well the only place. I know Colton Town does some of it too. 
now, but same with the blade strip and everything. We're the only place really around here that's doing it. So just educating our customers on it and yeah. And they get better value out of a carcass that way, right? Because yeah. that typically that's ground up, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Everybody's sick of having ground or roast, and this is where you can have more steaks for your meat and utilize better. Cool. Thank you very much, Morgan. After speaking with Morgan, she mentioned one of the value-added steaks they pull off is the Merlot steak, and she's showing us here right now where they pull that from. But right in here, it's on the side where the eye of round was attached. You can come in here, loosen it up a bit, and it'll pull straight off the silver skin. Do you want to cut in there? I'm learning something new. This is called the Merlot steak, which is off of the heel, which kind of sits below the outside round. And in the middle of this muscle, I, I used to call this the horseshoe muscle, and we would just grind it out, but. Yeah, it's most, we ground it until this semester. We finally found, we heard that there was a nice steak in there, and so we finally found out which one it was, and they've been selling really well. We did have a post about it, and a lot of people that like flanks, it's similar to your flank. Mine is a lot thinner of a grain. It's a lot finer, so it's even better than that. Even more tender. Have you had it yourself yet? Yeah. Fried it up. I did steak sandwiches with it. Fried it up real quick, and then sliced it up, and it's really nice. There you go, guys. And if you take this program, you can cut your own beef and get way more steaks and value out of it. He's just kind of finding that silver skin and staying tight to it is what it looks like. Then there's no pressure. This is just going to be on the internet forever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's all. I don't know how to pull this muscle myself, so I'm very interested. That's the Merlot. Yeah, so then you clean it up, clean the silver skin off, denude it, and it's ready to go. Very cool. It kind of looks like a flank. Yeah, similar. And there we go. He knows exactly what to do after his months at old college. Take that silver skin off and excess fat. Since I got you on camera, how do you? how's your experience been at old college so far? You enjoy it? Yeah, it's very good. Lots of hands on. Yeah. Were you in the meat cutting industry before you got here, or you just decided to get into it through this? Uh, well, I'm just a cattle farmer, so okay. I just want to learn how to cut up the meat myself. So Yeah. But then, now if you know how it's done, then you can know whether or not the butcher's treating you correctly kind of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. And your beef. Expect. Yeah. Yeah. What to expect out of the butchers. And cool. Steaks we can get. Very cool. And how, so you're four months in, three months in now? Oh, three. And you say, have your skills gotten more proficient? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Knowledge and... What's your favorite steak now that you've gone through? What was it before and then after the program? Probably just the regular T-bone, but probably similar T-bone. T-bone's still the king. <laughs> nice, perfect, thank you. Here's a bunch of the different cuts coming off of the hip. So that Merlot would have come off of that shank right there. You guys have seen my backpacker run, but this is a monster and uh, you can see the students are prepping everything for the store. Sealing it up. Even the things like how to run a backpacker properly. You can see he's flattening out the wrinkles so he doesn't lose a seal. Learn all that here too if you haven't, if you don't know it already. And you gotta learn to work as a team and make sure everything gets labeled correctly because this is going straight out to the store. I think anyways, this stuff's going straight out to the store. That's what he's doing over there, tagging it. Yeah, you bet. Pricing and tagging there and uh, shipping her over to the store. Perfect. You guys learn like all the labeling rules and whatnot here while you're here too? Yep. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, kind of expiry dates and uh, labeling storage, checking for leakers, getting a good seal, cleaning the bags, kind of the full gamut. Ready to, ready to go to the cooler by the time we're done with it. Perfect. This is cool. I just kind of noticed it out of the corner of my eye in the room. They're doing some dry aged products, which they didn't used to do at uh, when I was in college. So they're prepping those things. Maybe we'll go for a tour through the cooler here. Got permission to head into the cooler here. And this is their hanging cooler. They've already pulled a couple of beef out of it. Oh, better shut the door behind me. And so they got all sorts of cool stuff on the go. These are their different cuts and and things and that's a cool way to hang lamb so it looks like they hung them already and then they to save space they put them on these trees 
Uh, they usually hang offals off of these trees, so that's a cool way to use them. New to me. But it looks like this is one of our dry aging trees. And what they do is they break the primal. It doesn't matter what size the piece of meat is in, the aging process affects it the same. If it is a side of beef, or if it is a primal, or if it is in a backpack bag. That is obviously ground beef. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't kind of count, doesn't work the same, but this is sort of what a dry aging cooler setup is like. These guys have cooler temperature controls. I'm guessing it's probably at one degree Celsius in here. And I'm not sure I should ask how long these guys hang their beef before they cut them. I'm guessing it's probably 14 days. We got all sorts of other cool things to work with over here. It looks like we got some offals and livers. I'm guessing, looks like they saved some testicles. I wonder what that was off of. I don't know what product they're making with that. We didn't work with those when I was in school. But all sorts of beautiful roasts. A nice tied French rack, yum. Okay, so Morgan said we're gonna quiz these guys live time. Um, I was gonna ask Morgan what the aging process and stuff is like here. What, like from the moment they're killed, what's the process till it gets to the, your cutting table? I don't wanna do this. Seven days. Eli, ask Eli. Okay, Eli's the man for this question. So how how's the process flow? This beef was alive how many days ago? And then you guys are working on it now. Uh, this beef would have been alive 10 to 14 days ago, I believe. So it hangs yeah, almost two weeks. And then it's cut up and hauled straight to the store. Okay. And if you could, what's the benefits briefly? Like why do you wait those 10 to 14 days? Uh, helps age the meat, makes it tender, and gets it better. It's easier to break the animal down as well. Perfect. More flavor. Um, what about those? Back to you, Eli, here. Just, uh, what about, I was just in the cooler. I see you guys are doing some dry aging stuff. There's some stuff dated back February 16th. How's the, how much dry aging do you guys do here, and how for how long? Uh, usually it's a 30 day dry age to a prime rib. So usually we'll grab one or two loins uh, maybe a week. So, yeah. Okay. Have you had the vac packed steak versus a dry aged steak? I haven't compared the two. Yeah. Okay. Morgan, have you had vac packed versus dry aged? Yeah, I have. What's better in your opinion? I this is a hot debate online, so. Depending where you're doing the dry age, because it shrinks so much more down, so it's a higher concentration of your fat in there. It's a lot more buttery, so it's a lot nicer texture, which I like better. Okay. So either way, your yields is another thing that you have to play with because you're going to get so much shrinkage rather than a vacuum pack bag. So it depends where you want to play, but my vote. Okay, so flavor equals dry aged, yield equals vac aged. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I come back in from the cutting room and Shelly's gonna explain what the students are doing here. So the students are uh, stuffing a emulsion, it's a beef griller, into a, a beef collagen casing and they're just linking them right now. Perfect, so you get to learn the hand linking skill even though that thing has the automatic attachment, it's a good skill to know. Exactly, yeah. And this is, this is not new to them, they've done a lot of linking, so. Yeah, these guys look like they yes. Oh, and that's cool. You got the little perfect portioning blocks out so every single one is the same size. Yes, yes. We really felt that that helped the students get a consistent product, especially when it comes to packaging. A beef griller. This is, looks like it's got some cure in it. It's going through the smokehouse? It is going through the smokehouse. So it's got cure and sodium erythrobate in it. So. And that's another cool part of this program. You get to learn why those products are all in there, right? If you never worked with a smoke product, you maybe don't know what sodium earth rate does, but you guys go over that in the classroom pretty thoroughly. Exactly, exactly. So they know um, the regulations in and out when they leave here, so. Yeah, that's nice. And we talked to, wasn't it Curtis earlier? He's starting his own business and he got everything he needed to know, basically, essentially from your guys' program. Absolutely. All right, so you've probably seen me do this on my channel here, but what are we doing here? Mixing up a batch of sausage? Uh, yeah, we're doing Bavarian Smokies, I think. Ooh, one of my personal faves. Oh, it's not going to focus, but you can see the meat mixing away in there. So I know you're not a retail student, but can you briefly describe the sausage making steps? 
Um, so you get your ingredients in your meat and you're going to mix it and, and um, get protein extraction. And then that's like, it'll get sticky and you can't take it off your hand. That's how they describe it to us. And then we'll put it in the machine and stuff sausage. Kind of depends what you're doing. Perfect. There's the sausage making steps in just a few moments. You got her bundled up at Old College. This is a cool knickknack you should put on your sausage stuffing table. It's a little smokehouse stick holder. So you guys can kind of pre-rack these so they, one, don't untwist. It looks like they're untwisting a bit. And then you can air dry them on these. Is that why you're doing this step? I would assume so. Like we, with the hot dogs, we assume in the cooler because we don't have space for them right now in the smoker. So I'm assuming that these will be hung and then put in the fridge and then when the smoker is available then they'll be smoked. That's what I would assume. I think you're right. Those look awesome. So before I got here we missed the demo on uh, doing an alternative hang. If you'd like to see how their alternative hang methods are done let me know in the comments, but that's, this is one of the perks of being an old college student. When Brad feels like experimenting on things, you get to taste it later. So the students are, I just came in to warm my camera up, the battery's dying, the students are working away, and Brad's cooking them steak, so that's a pretty good deal. This is different muscles off of the hip. Looks like the sirloin tip eye and the outside round there. Or maybe that's also sirloin tip eye. But. Uh, labels are right there. Okay. We'll see what the students think of these in a little bit. Oh, right, good deal. Well, thanks, Dylan. Appreciate it. Uh, we were just in the cutting room and the value-added processing room, and you come in, another alumni. I was just saying how cool it is. Like, we can pop back in. Brad and Shelly are ultra generous with their time. The students are getting loads of hands-on time. So you were back here today just getting some points and tips, and I'd luckily run into you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, it's always welcoming with open arms. They, anytime I need something, they always... They're always there for me, no matter what, for sure. Yeah, I've had that mutual experience. Um, so you own Colby Meats, and you were a grad here. When did you graduate? Uh, what year would that have been? I'm not exactly sure. It would be three years. So 2019, I graduated through the course here at Dolts College. And uh, yeah, I started my own business. Actually, right when I was starting on my business, as soon as I took the course too as well. So we had a little bit of cluster there as well. But, uh, but yeah. It's been fantastic. The course did give me tons of knowledge coming into the into the industry. Of course, maybe not all of it, but it gave me a really good heads up indication of what was going to be and what what things are going to be going forward too as well. So you knew how to make all your own food safety programs, how to show the health inspectors your formulas and how to cook and handle things safely and make it taste good at the same time. Absolutely. So yeah, so my dad's been in the butchering business now for 30 years or so longer. And I think we had to update him as well too because he was kind of stuck in the past with the 80s and how they did things in the back. So yeah, it was really nice to see the new regulations and how they how do you have to handle and everything else and uh, you know the cooked meats and all that stuff, right? So it's it was very knowledgeable in that aspect of things coming from you know my father that would do the old school way of things and when there's a new way of doing things too as well. And yeah, when the health inspector comes now, it makes it so much more easier just with the knowledge that you have coming through the college it's it's it helped a ton wicked uh what was your favorite part like did you were you a kill force student yeah, did I was you like on the slaughter floor you betcha yeah i would say slaughter floor was pretty fun um i would say the value added would be more of the aspect of things i would like to go through the next time kind of thing um we moved on the direction of not as much farm kill or at all and we don't do any farm kills at all so yeah value added would have been probably more my way of things but my favorite would be definitely the cutting I, I love the cutting end of things too as well. Cool. So you guys do mostly cut, uh, retail at your at Colby Meats now. Yeah, you betcha. So yeah, it's all retail. We do make our own sausage in store too as well. Same with bacon, hams, all that stuff. We try and cover every aspect as much as possible. It's not just one specific thing. It's it's everything there. So cool. And so. Would you recommend this to other people that want to learn about how to cut meat, learn about if you're a beef farmer, what's happening after you unload the beef and off the trailer at the meat plant kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely a course for any anyone, I think. if Even if you're going to be a home butcher doing your own wild game or whatever else, it is 
It's a short time and a lot of knowledge. Four months still, correct? Yeah, I think I believe it is four months, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's four months of your time, and it's it's you're coming out with a ton of knowledge base. Not only that, a ton of knife skills that's gonna help you, especially if you're the home butcher, even in the field doing anything, it helps you immensely. Yeah, you have four months of reps, hands-on stuff. So. Exactly, and it's straight in, like they dive in. It's not, it's not like you're doing four months of classroom, right? It's all hands-on, away you go kind of thing, right? So. It, you can't to me you can't be that I'm not much of a book learner I'm more of a hands-on <laughs> yeah. and and yeah that was a way of to me a way of learning and that's it was that's the only way in my mind yeah. I'd agree I'm also not much of a book learner like I got can't read very well uh, but I found that you still get the book knowledge like it's it's that much easier to learn it and memorize it when you know because when I was here you'd sit in the classroom for the morning or an hour it wasn't very long right. and then you'd go right to immediately on how to get that muscle off, on how to get the thing off, and it just stuck with me my whole yeah, life. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah, it's, it sticks like glue, honestly, like you just said there. Um, and not only that, like these books too, as well. Like, uh, yeah, you get a little bit of book work, and it's nice that you can follow back on that too, as well. Um, but like you said, you nailed it right on the head when you just go straight from the book straight to the table, kind of thing, right? So, perfect. Well, thank you very much for your You're time, man, welcome. and I wish you lots of success with Colby Meats. Absolutely. Hope to see you guys around too, for sure. <laughs> you bet. Take care. <laughs> So this is Curtis. When did you graduate, Curtis? Oh, it was uh, August of uh, last year, 2023. Okay, so fresh. Did you have any meat cutting experience before you got to Olds College? No, I did not. I was uh, um, in the transportation industry all my life and uh, then uh, decided that I was going to get into something else and get into my meat cutting. So. Okay, very cool. And then so you were here for the one semester and uh, you feel it gave you enough value to get your first couple steps going in your own business yes it was very uh it was very informative i uh learned a lot it was a lot to learn in four months but uh we got through it and of course i'm back here now just to go over a couple things that i didn't quite get but we're uh yeah i've cut lots of meat now since i've had my own shop going since november now that's wicked yeah brad and shelly the whole crew is ultra accommodating to alumni students as you can see today they've invited us down to come do this and when you say you learned a lot like what are some of the categories you get knowledge in when you come to old college meat cutting program uh the the biggest was the uh for me was the sausage making i learned a pile of stuff on sausage making um you know the the protein extraction and making a nice firm sausage and it, yeah, everything was really good. Um, the meat cutting was, uh, I, I, I've never done really meat cutting, so that was, I learned how to cut up an entire beef, and it was good. Great, so overall, you give it two thumbs up? Two thumbs up, absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks Curtis, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, I just popped into, what do you guys call this room? Merchandising, Merchandising room. And uh, they're prepping stuff for the counter, tomahawks. Everyone's got their own space to work on here. All right, looks like you got some mechanically tenderized meat. What are you building? That's correct, uh, beef Florentine. Beef which? Florentine. Okay, what's that? It's, uh... Okay. <laughs> so it gets, you, you build uh, a, little, a little meat sheet, and then spinach and peppers, roll it up, tie it, and then you roll it in a rub, and cut it into a pinwheel. Nice. That's a good value added product because I'm guessing that's hip meat there. You guys tenderized and yeah, are adding value. Inside row. Yeah. Looks good. I'm excited to see the end product. And so, do you have a? Do you work in a meat shop outside of this beforehand? Do you plan on going into one afterwards? Maybe or eventually. Eventually, I will. Um, yeah. What was? What got you interested in taking in the program in the first place? I've always wanted to take it. A few of your videos. A uh, couple other guys that I've talked to, bragging up the college, and uh, so yeah, cool. Glad I came. And you can just make more yummy things at home. That's right. Yeah. If nothing else, it uh, yeah. Well, at least now, like you know, when you walk into a Costco, where the cuts come from off the animal, how to process them like this, and get more value out of your money at the grocery store. Essentially, at the very least, is when you Absolutely. come. Absolutely, and and you can tell which are the better, better. No, same cuts, but a better piece of meat. That's true. Yeah. Cool. Well, we'll check in on the Florentine when you get her all wrapped up. All right. I just seen them save some of this call fat on the kill floor. And uh, those look beautiful, man. What do, you, what do you call these? Uh, these are uh, 
prune and apricot stuffed uh, call fat wrap pork shoulder roast. So basically, uh, lay open a pork shoulder roast, uh, salt them, we brush them with uh, maple glaze, maple brown sugar glaze, stuff them with prunes and apricots, wrap them in call fat, and uh, elastic them up. That sounds pretty dang good. Yeah, they're, uh, they're deadly. And so those elastics are just on there to hold the shape and keep yeah, your prunes and stuff tied in there? Yeah, they're oven safe, so you bake them with the elastics and then snip them off before you eat them. And oh, that's very cool. Away you go. Those look beautiful. You're doing an excellent job. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is Shelly. She's in charge of the merchandising side of things. So what do we got going on, Shelly? So right here, what we have is we have a uh, pork shoulder and we've butterflied it open and we've seasoned it with salt at 10 grams per kg. And we have uh, stuffed it with um, cherry sausage and we're gonna glaze it, uh, garnish it with uh, some cherries. And it's a great product. It's just a different way to utilize the blade. So the goal of this room is to kind of add value to those cuts that are kind of more on the commodity yeah, side. Yeah, so eh? they're essentially taking primals and they're um, looking at different ways that we can add uh, value to it and bring uh, be different from all the other retail stores and bring the customers to us and it seems to be working very well. Yeah, that's cool. So lots of these cuts in traditional like you know, 10, 15, 20 years, we're kind of just grind them up cuts and stuff. And you guys are adding, well, just like we seen yesterday, they did an alternative hang, just different methods to get, you know, a more tender cut out of a traditionally not tender cut or add value to it somehow is the goal. Exactly. It's, it's literally maximizing the muscle in different areas. So this is what we're doing. So let's take a walk over here. Sure. Okay. Did we talk about the tomahawks? Not yet. I got a quick pick of them. They look very delicious. Uh, we took a primal and we literally removed uh, the meat from the bone is to make some tomahawks and the, we cannot keep these on our shelves. It's very popular. <laughs> I believe that. Yeah. Um, I, just looking at these, Shelly, they look phenomenal. Do you guys get the beef off the old college farm here? Uh, no, we uh, source our, um, our beef locally from Marshall uh, Feedlot. Okay. Because I would say these look like triple A's. They're beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Nice yeah. Nice. Okay, so that's what I got right now. Uh, I've got to do some more work here. So sure. And so these guys have this fresh meat display cooler to fill up. You can see they just got it started. They're working on some of the things back there before the store opens. And we got dragon's eggs, four bucks each. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Who doesn't want to eat a dragon's egg? But they'll fill this up with all sorts of neat value added products that you learn to make here. This is, uh, and they present wonderfully. Like, look at that. Got a beef pot roast with all the veggies, and then it looks like they've added a little bit of back fat in there to add moisture and flavor. Ooh, that's bone marrow. They've added bone marrow to the top. Talk about value added stuff. You, you gotta be working with the whole carcass to get some of these beautiful treats, but you learn it all down here. So this is cool. They're doing some straight beef and straight pork products. They got beef bacon that looks amazing. Going on to some of these roasts, I assume. We'll check them out when they're all finished up. So uh, what we have here is a marinated bullet muscle or the pectinus muscle, and that's located in the inside round. So it's been seasoned, and what we're going to do here is we're going to make a uniform roast that we're going to wrap with beef bacon and garnish with roseberry. Ooh, that sounds good. So again, something coming off... You know, a hip muscle off of the beef isn't traditionally, it's not like your prime rib or anything like that. So you guys are using... So it's a, typically a ground piece, so it's not pulled at all in industry, so we're trying to change that. Yeah. And so when you say it's tumbled, marinated, that kind of does what to the muscle? Oh, it's not tumbled. It's not tumbled, it's just marinated overnight. And uh, a lot of our customers are using this in the air fryer as a, a, the new trend of cooking. So um, we cannot keep these on our shelves. Very cool. Oh, a, the beef Florentine is coming together. When we get into the middle of that, it's going to look amazing. I'll just go and start again there. Then. What we have here is a um, seasoned chicken breast that we uh, salt prior uh, prior to use. So we salt again at 10 grams per kg. And what that helps is with the protein extraction. So we're making a chicken Kiev. 
So that's with uh, chicken breast and a nice butter insert that's got seasonings of the dill, parsley, garlic, lemon juice inside. So essentially we're just going to go in and form it together. And it just stays nice and sealed. And then the student is going to go ahead and uh, dip it in a mustard dip. Mustard dip is uh, a replacement for the egg dip. So we're going to dip it into a mustard dip and then bread it. That's a great idea. And then you don't have your egg allergy exactly. people, right? Exactly. We're really trying to limit our uh, allergens in the facility. And uh, I, we realize that uh, mustard is an allergen, but mustard is in all our products. So, yeah. Yeah. You're probably less people though, right? Pardon me? Less people are allergic to mustard, then you run into eggs, exactly. and you run into whey, and you're all that stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Beautiful. Those look a little awesome. The bacon wrapped mini roasts are coming together. Look at that. A nice little, is that, that's thyme or rosemary? Okay. Rosemary is a garnish. Looks awesome. Yum. Florentine's getting its coat. Yeah. That smells delicious. What is that? That's flavored breadcrumbs? Uh, Mediter Mediterranean garlic spice. I'm, I'm not oh, okay. It. It smells delicious. It does smell really good. I know. Uh, I was cruising out there in the display area, and I seen dragon eggs. What's a dragon egg? A dragon egg is, I believe, it's chicken with. Uh, it's got herb. No, not herb and gar garlic. Garlic. Is it chorizo sausage? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, what's the dragon egg? Uh, dragon egg chorizo sausage wrapped around a ball of uh, jalapeno cream cheese and shredded mozzarella, and then uh, are they breaded? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they did. Dipped in a mustard wash and breaded. Oh, all the good ideas you get. I've been waiting for this. Look at that. Ooh. Look at this man's work. That's freaking beautiful. <laughs> you bet, man. How would you cook it? Uh, bake it in the oven, 350, till you get an internal temperature of 72. Nice. Yep. So you finished up those stuffed shoulder roasts. You're on to the next product. How many products do you guys prepare? Well, okay, quickly, what is this product here? Uh, so this here is an Italian truffle. So basically our beef Italian sausage, 150 grams per ball. It'll be uh, rolled in Parmesan cheese, pressed out with our truffle press here. And uh, basically to form a little hollow cup. And uh, <laughs> That's then, a wicked little tool. Then a little, two tablespoons of marinara sauce. They're pre-frozen in balls here. Drop that in. Uh, an additional two tablespoons of mozzarella cheese on top and then garnish with parsley. Sounds awesome. How many different products are you guys preparing here for that fresh display case? Uh, what do we do? Fifteen a day. There's, I mean, hundreds. A day? You guys do this every day? Uh, Thursdays and Fridays. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're in the, in the cutting room, we're in the value added room making sausage the rest of the time. Okay. Wicked. Uh, did you have any of these skills coming into this? What were you doing beforehand? Uh, I'm an oil field guy, so no, not uh, done a lot of home butchering and whatnot. I grew up on a farm and hunting, but came here and found out I've been doing it wrong my whole life. So it's been a real learning experience, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. You're happy with everything you've learned and all the hands-on you get here and stuff? Yeah, yeah, loving it. And the, 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 the science part of it. Like, we spend a lot of time in the classroom in the morning and uh, kind of learn the theory behind things, the enzymes and the proteins, and the way meat reacts to temperature and, and different ingredients. And it's, uh, yeah, it's been very informative. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks, Wes. Thank you. And just that Wes is working on this corner. We got another product getting made over here. What are you making? The serpent turf. Uh, I'm not sure what cut this is. This looks like an outside round, if I was to guess. And the, they said that you did a baking soda marinade on it. What's that do? Uh, be tenderizing it. Uh, yeah, just tenderizing it, I believe. Nice. And your garnish is here. The seafood to come. Looks good. I've got a feeling I'm going to get called over to the kill floor here real quick. So. I'll get you guys a shot of that display cooler when it's all filled up. Meat looks good. All right, I just 
came zinging out of the kill floor because they said the display value added case is just about full or is about to be full and this is the products these guys have been working on all morning you've seen us working with some of the guys there and they said i better come out because it flies out of here when the door is open they have chicken kievs bratwurst croissants very cool pinwheels dragon eggs which we heard about before the pinwheel pork and cherry shoulder roasts that cherry sausage is delicious stuffed tenderloin stuffed shoulder roast wrapped in that cull fat this looks like it's out of a fine french deli it's what you get to learn down here the italian truffles those look awesome that was with that neat little press they were using back there and last but not least the tomahawk ask any butcher he'll say that's a dumb cut because you're paying a bunch of money for bones but i don't know you guys love it so we cut it for you oh and then actually you can see the students right outside the retail case preparing your food for you and they're making the beef wellingtons we better go check those out they're a very cool product made here all right and this is the product i'm most curious about because this is a sous vide eye of round they're turning into beef wellingtons we just got the sous vide to play with at home myself and look at that that's cool Have you guys had the beef wellies from here? Absolutely. And? These and the mini beef wellington are unreal. Unreal. <clears throat> Out of an eye around. That's so cool. So you guys sous vide, sous vide these overnight before we wrapped them up? Before you wrapped them up in these? Uh, yeah, 24 hours at 57 degrees in the sous vide and it uh, leaves them a lot more of a rare to medium rare look, but it's a fully cooked product. It's a full wipeout on E. coli and everything. And uh, 57 renders collagen without cooking meat, so the collagen renders down. They're nice and tender, but they're, uh, they're still a nice medium rare. So cool. Good way to use up an eye around. Okay, and this is how they got around using eggs. They got a mustard wash and then a mushroom crumble or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Okay, cool. I can see why these fly off the shelf. So then you just get sold like that, one big whole eye around as a, as a unit, or you guys cut them up? Yeah, uh, they're a half eye around each. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then, uh, yeah, wrapped and sold just like that. Beautiful. There you go, that's what the end products are gonna look like. All right, so I'm here with Brad McLeod, my old instructor. And to, old is the right word, yeah. Old, I was just going to say, tomorrow, you've been here 25 years? Um, 23rd of March, I'll be 25 years, yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is my 50th course that I've taught. How many students does that equate to? Do you know off the top of your head? Over 600. Well, yeah. 600 people better off, in my opinion. Uh, I guess what's, I kind of got a pretty good idea from the students what the course is like today, but in your words, brief overview, what are you getting when you sign up for Olds College? Well, uh, the elevator speech is how to run a meat plant by Brad. So it's, uh, you got to learn the food safety standards, the cleanup, the, uh, how to write the paperwork, how to make the sausage, um, um, how to cut the meat, of course, how to slaughter, and then they're seeing the value added merchandising. But the course is set up to try to train leadership and people that will, like yourself, build their own businesses. I'd say it does that very well. Um... Yeah, lots of cool new stuff you have down here, the merchandising. So another cool thing about your program is it's self-sufficient. So your students basically create enough product that it, it pays for itself, correct? Well, we're a cost recovery program. So we uh, all, instead of charging the kids $17,000 and then giving the meat away, we sell the meat in our store, which you've seen that. And that keeps the tuition down for the students to um, a dull roar so that they can afford to come. Um, and we, instead of getting like government funding for uh, the running of the program, we get, we get that through selling of the meat. Which is genius too, because then you know if the course is kind of paying for itself, you're creating a valuable product and that transfers out into the real world, well, essentially. When we designed this, uh, this cost recovery program, uh, we got an unintentional uh, thing that happened is that the, 
the demand for our product, the students uh, get to see that the product that they're making has demand and it gives them confidence to start their own business because they, they see that we make, teach them how to make good products and that there is a demand in retail, which um, in some cases schooling isn't like that, you know, <laughs> and, and this one they can see the real world, you know, they make a product and then they will, sometimes they don't even get them in the counter and someone's there taking it out, right? I did just hide some of the beef wellington before we started this because the store opened. Um, oh shoot, I just had a question. But how, so if you want to enroll in this, is there a wait time or do they just go to Olds College website and be that's self easy yeah. explained from there? Yeah, the Olds College website has set up for enrolling. Um, there usually opens uh, a certain day and it fails very fast. So there's usually a wait list. Um, but uh, I've had students wait up to a year to get in here. But there's uh, some get a call the next day. So often students don't show up. So my advice to anyone wanting to come is be ready. And you might get a phone call saying, come tomorrow. And you guys get students from all over the place. I heard they, on the kill floor, you guys started the Barba, what? From a Mexican student that was in school here Barba from Mexico. Cool. Yeah, so I've had students from all over the world, many different countries over the years. Um, because of the student visa thing that was just announced, we're wondering if we're going to have trouble with that. But uh, we get students all the time from all across Canada. We're the only program that does what we do, so it's uh, pretty easy to attract anyone. So if they want to learn slaughter or the, how to run a meat shop kind of stuff, this is where they kind of got to be. Great. Um, is there anything you want to no, add? Thanks Thanks for coming and doing this, man. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. It's yeah. been great. I got to sneak out of the shop a couple of days. Okay. Good deal. Yeah. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Like I mentioned in the intro, there's just two little notes I'd like to make. Uh, the first note is just, I want to express to you guys my fondness for the program. Like I said, I took it in 2010 and it was one of the most positive educational experiences I ever had. Um, a big part of that was Brad McLeod. He is an excellent facilitator. He was a very positive influence on my life. One of the rare people you meet that changes your life for the better. And uh, that's, I just wanted to share that because it's not just the subject content you come across in the program, it's how it's facilitated to you. Uh, I didn't have the other program directors at the time, like you've seen in there, uh, Shelly and Morgan and the rest of the crew there. But I know I have spoke with Olds College students since and they say the same thing about those guys. So Brad has surrounded himself with some of the best teachers and people you can you can probably surround yourself with so I wanted to say how fond I am of my old college memories and if you do have the ability to sign up you should it comes highly recommended secondly the kill floor is not in this video you did hear me talking about the kill floor we decided I decided not to connect it to this video because my past experience on YouTube is if I have a video like on farm hog or beef harvest it gets demonetized and then YouTube does not distribute it as widely because of excess gore and uh, I wanted to share Olds College as widely as possible so it's not connected to this video but if you want to see the Olds College kill floor video I will put it up here or here or here or here I don't know where it's going to end up, but you just click on it, it'll take you to the kill floor. And maybe you will learn some tips and tricks from Eamon and the crew, Almond and the crew. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you click on that kill floor video and subscribe and like. And thanks for watching. Take care.